Hello and welcome to part 3 of building SQL Server 2012 next-gen HADR test lab using Windows Server 8 Hyper-V. In today's video, we'll enable Windows Server 8 Hyper-V role, we'll check basic settings, do some network configuration, create parent virtual hard disk with Windows Server 8 and use differential virtual hard disk. And finally, we'll create a Windows Domain Controller. My name is Prakash Hira, and I work as a Senior Infrastructure DB at Advanced Software. You can visit my blog to check these posts as well as the previous videos on the, the overall goal to create a virtual SQL Server test lab, which you can run from your own laptop or desktop and basically able to test out all the SQL Server Next Gen HDR features. In part one of the series, we talk about if you want to create a low power Windows Server 8 Hyper-V lab or ESXFI lab about a configuration which I am using. In part two, you learn how to create a virtual hard disk and convert it into a bootable Windows Server 8 partition and then configure its boot properties so system can boot directly with virtual hard disk leaving your existing OS untouched. There were some queries about using Windows to go features of Windows Server 8 which is a very viable solution though at this point based on my limited testing I have decided not to use it as being the first beta it still has some glitches in it. But I do look forward to that solution very well because what it allows you to do is by using a USB disk to boot completely is purely independent of changing anything into the existing bootloader. And that's the benefit you get if you're using a USB to do it. On an alternate note, you can always put virtual hard disk in a USB drive and boot from it the same way we have how we are booting a virtual hard disk from a normal disk. Let's look at the demo setup. First we'll create a parent virtual hard disk and then we'll use a differential disk configure our first Windows 8 server domain controller. The IP of the domain controller will be this and once domain controller is configured in next series we'll configure the two virtual nodes and implement SQL Server 2012 on them. If you are following the part 2 video where we configure the VHD then it would be best if you are following the same naming convention and the OS details in this series as well as the same IP addresses so that in future sessions you can just get along and if in any case you are having any issues you can shoot back and comment and I'll, I can certainly help you in much better fashion. It's time to start with configuring Windows Server 8 Beta Hyper-V2. So this is the machine booted and I'm locked onto it. If you have been wondering about the steps of booting from VHD Windows Server 8, we'll cover them a little bit later when we are creating the parent VHD. At that point of time you'll see the same step so you can go back and configure use the same steps. Let's look at the current configuration how's the VHD is being booting up. So C drive this is the 25 gig disk what we created and this disk resides here. This is where we created the disk so this 25 gig disk is now visible to Windows as a C drive and this D drive is the one which we were earlier booted on and we prepared this Windows installation to configure this VHD as you can see the source folder is there. Now let's go ahead and start Hyper-V configuration. Click on Server Manager. Make sure there are a couple of settings you are doing it. One of them is enable the remote desktop so that you can control Hyper-V from another machines as well as Disable the IE security if you're using it. It would be convenient since this is a test lab. I would recommend that go ahead and change the name of the computer We'll put it as Windows is 8 SRV VHDX we'll Go ahead and change the name 
click OK. Close and restart the machine. Okay, server is rebooted. I'm back in local manager. Another setting what I would recommend is to configure is to change IP address to static. To keep things simple, since we are not using IPv6, I'll go ahead and disable it. Uh, so I have choose 42 as the IP address for my domain controller. Make sure these are the exact values you are putting in case you are working on your local home router. You might see 192.168 uh, which is perfectly okay to keep these values as 192.168 and the, this is the IP so you can change accordingly. If you are connected through RDP at this point you lose the connection because IP address has changed so we'll go ahead and reconnect it with RDP. Refresh local server and you can see where the Ethernet connection is connected 10.0.0.42. Let's go ahead and configure Hyper-V role and some of the basic features. Click on add Hyper-V role. Pick the default values. Click on add features. Click next. Select wired Ethernet connection. If you have wireless, you can just pick it as usual. Click continue. Choose default. Click next. I will be changing the default settings here as I am looking to configure the VHDs in a particular fashion and using the child VHDs and differential VHDs and saving all of them on a different drive just in case I have to roll back to this VHD version. On the send drive, create a new folder. W8 VHD config, click OK. Browse, select the same folder. Click on restart server if applicable. Yes. Install. Click close. Server rebooted. Installation is completed click close and now you can see two components are more visible one is file and storage services and second is Hyper-V click on Hyper-V right click and select Hyper-V manager look at the basic configuration of Hyper-V there is no settings needs to be changed as default is fine for the test lab now let's create our first Hyper-V virtual machine we'll give it a name W8SRV parent Windows 8 server parent click on a store in a different location choose create a new folder parent and select this folder select use dynamic memory select network connection so these are the default values click next Click on install operating system from boot room, select the ISO. Here is Windows Server 8 Beta ISO. Click next, finish. Right click, connect, start. Now this is the Windows 8 boot section which would be exactly similar to what you will see with when you are trying to boot with VHD. So select the same options. Pick Windows Server 8, Beta Data Center, Server with GUI.
custom install click next it'll take about 15 to 20 minutes to finish this process and windows will reboot once that is completed so installation is finished we are back on setting page after the reboot put a password finish great we are at boot screen click on action control alt delete login depends on your choice click on accept or decline great we have created first virtual machine on windows server 8 let's go ahead and do some basic configuration and then we'll do a sys prep for this first remote desktop go ahead and enable it firewall So we're building a test lab, so go ahead and turn off the firewalls. This is only for the test lab in production. It depends on how your system supports. You'll see a different way firewall is configured. Close. I configuration. Go ahead, disable it. IPv4. I'll go ahead and remove IPv6. But this is the basic image we have. Now let's just prep. Go to Windows, System 32, Sys prep execute sysprep.exe click on generalize change option to shut down click ok so once the sysprep part is done the system will shut down so virtual machine is turned off go ahead and delete it Let's check the parent disk. This disk is what we will use to configure all child VHDs or differential VHDs. I'll go ahead and mark this disk as read only. Let's start building first virtual machine as a domain controller. We plan to build this first VM with the system name Windows 8 Server DC. The IPs will be 10.0.0.99 and TNS will be 127.0.0.1. Since prep is completed, parent virtual hard disk is ready. Let's go ahead and create first differential virtual hard disk. New hard disk. Next. Pick the latest format VSDX. Click Differencing, create a new folder called our server name, what we are planning to build, Windows is Server Domain Controller, select, change the names, select the parent virtual hard disk. So we'll go ahead and finish. So we created first differential virtual hard disk. Now let's go ahead and create the virtual machine for domain controller. Pick default settings, click next, use dynamic memory, next, real tech. Uh, here is the change. You will be using an existing virtual hard disk and select the one we created in the domain controller as differential. Right now, look at the size of it. 
it's only 4 mag flash connect start this will prepare virtual machine for domain controller once back on setting page go ahead and skip the product key accept license click next and password Click action, control auto delete. Great, we are back on dashboard, logged on to virtual machine as a Windows domain controller. Check next video in same blog post to see configuring Windows domain controller for Windows Server 8. Thank you for watching this video. Here are the different ways to connect me. You can post comments on sqlfeatures.com and I'll be able to respond in probably in a couple of days maximum. So look forward to see you in the next video configuring Windows Domain Controller.